Hello everybody. Um, yesterday on the field of devastation left by doing uh, little videos on welding which hopefully some of you have found useful. I know some of you already have because of the comments I've got which really um, it's quite a relief actually because I wasn't super keen on doing that kind of instructional video. Most of my videos have just been me documenting what I've been doing, which is quite easy because it's just me pointing at the camera and stuff and not telling people how you should or shouldn't do things. I'm just showing the way I do it. So to not get loads of negative comments on that is a nice, basically. Um, anyway, I didn't get a chance to do anything on Dotty yesterday because I was doing all of those welding videos. But today my aim is to finally finish this lower wing repair it's looking really nice i'm really happy with that because uh at one point as you all know and as i was advised by many i probably should have just hacked the whole wing off but um i did want to keep as much of it original as possible and now there's no rust in there whatsoever that's all solid and just what's finishing off um, in other news, I have a big thank you to say to Craig Stevens, who has sent me for free another camera. It's a kit vision, which is basically a copy of a GoPro. I've done some quick tests with it. It's not got the same sort of picture quality or sound quality as the GoPro, but it does work reliably. And best of all, it has a viewfinder. So a lot of my problems have been aiming the goddamn camera because I think it's focused on one thing or showing something but it actually doesn't whereas now with this hopefully I can set it up um, and know exactly what I'm pointing it at and I'll probably do videos between the two and then intersperse them so I can be um, doing a like a general chatty video on this one and then close up of welding on this one which I think people are finding helpful because the welding seems to be of most interest to people I do mechanical work as well as you know from the diesel and um, well, I will put up some videos soon of the Senator that I've got as well um, and some of the sort of mechanical stuff I did on that but um, most people seem to be liking the welding because it's viewed as a bit of a dark art uh, which it isn't really it just takes a knack and practice really but anyway less chatting more doing Well, as you might have noticed, I had a bit of a fail there with the new camera. I didn't realize that you had to switch the um, microphone on uh, and I haven't worked out how to do that yet. So for the moment, I'm switching back to the GoPro. Essentially, all I did was put a, t put a piece in there and I made it as a tab with a little wing extension, which basically is another technique you can use for welding close to the edge of something without burning back. Um, People have mentioned copper, and that would have been one of those situations ideal for copper because it would have stopped heat spread and stuff like that. Uh, my plug holes on this side I missed because when I was fabricating this, obviously it didn't punch the holes in the right place. So I just put a little, couple little stitches in there and then welded those up, hammered that round, welded it, and then I was explaining to the camera that that looks really messy, but by the time that's all rubbed back to bare metal, got epoxy on it, then a coat of seam sealer, then more epoxy, then stone chip, it's all going to be fine. And basically, all of that, which was, you know, if you remember back to a few videos ago, all of that was basically missing. Uh, it's now all in there. And it's all decent metal, all fits nicely. Really happy with that. And... Um, now I just need to go drill out all of these plug weld holes a larger size, clamp it up together. I'm not going to bother de-rusting it at this stage. I might do a few localised ones, but um, it's all got to be ground smooth anyway because I don't want filler in there. So there's no point doing the work twice. I might as well just give it a light tickle before I weld it to stop welding impurities in there. Then um, weld it up, cut the return off neatly all the way around and then grind it smooth afterwards. So that's what I'm going to do next. Just going to go through all of these plug weld holes with my blunt plug weld drill bit. 
to open them up and also to score the metal on the back side so I've got a nice surface to weld onto. <laughs> Sure you get the idea. I've just been round with the grips and the drill bit just to close these parts up together again, I'm giving it a light tickle with the, the um, wire wheel on the drill just to get rid of some of the rust. Uh, and I'm gonna plug weld that one first as a bit of a trial. Thinking back to yesterday's video on the pitfalls of plug welding, I thought I'd do probably quite an unpleasant and destructive test just to double check penetration and stuff like that on this sort of plug weld so I'm gonna set the welder to what I think is about right for this because we've got two sheets of basically 0.8 so it shouldn't need massive amounts of heat to get a good penetration so I'm on two min which is my third power setting out of six and then I've set the wire speed to just a Nats cock over six. And then I'm gonna plug weld it from the top and just try and keep the heat in there. Fill in that weld pool and we'll see what happens. And then afterwards, I'm gonna brutalize it with a chisel uh, as a way of basically checking that it's all hunky-dory. I don't really wanna do that because it's gonna bollocks it up, but um, it kinda needs to be done. That's about as hot as I'd want to have it. I potentially can turn the wire speed up a little bit. The, the, it did well um, ball up slightly into the gun, but it wasn't bad. So now about 6.2 on my little clock welder. Let's be brutal. I'll go find a chisel. Well, I'll start with a paint scraper and then a chisel afterwards. So what we don't want to happen is if you just go bing. So that's my paint scraper. Oh, that ain't coming out. Nasty surprise attack number two. get it in there. Right. So that's quite a good test. That is not coming apart. If I'd done the same welder settings and that had been like for instance on this bottom sill down here where I have one, two, three layers of point one one point two something like that. I probably would have wanted the welder even higher, but just for doing this stuff, I'm more than happy that those settings are fine. That hasn't done it. Uh, perhaps if I had been, you know, twisting it like I was yesterday with my samples, it might come off. But for what this needs to do, just hold a wing skin on. It's more than ample. So I'm just going to carry on now with those same settings. I'm going to make sure that the surfaces are clamped up before I get on with the welding because it's just so easy for if, if there's any sort of air gap it will just fizz a hole in your top panel or just not penetrate onto the one at the back <coughs> so hopefully it will be all right um yeah I'm just gonna crack on
see there's still a fair bit of uh, red oxide paint on the back side, so I'm just going to clean that off again. Make sure that the grinder, sorry, the welder has something to weld onto. out. Gonna put slightly more wire speed on. the same process all the way around some of the ones up there where I'm welding upside down I'll probably have quite a lot higher weld wire speed sorry because as I'm pulling the trigger and it's going up the molten metal will want to be falling back into the gun that's a uh, not particularly difficult to understand but I'll just fast forward this bit now Well, things don't always go according to plan. Two things I fucked up there. One was that I drilled all the way through with my spot weld drill, which is pretty unlucky, really. The next thing I did was I left the wire speed really high when I was just trying to fill in that hole. And that's resulted in a big, molten, shitty blob of weld, um, which I'm now gonna have to grind off to then try and fill in that hole carefully. Once again, it's that whole balance of trying to get enough heat in things without completely fucking it up. While I was in there and I had a lot of heat on the go, I put a big snot of welding. So at this stage, I'm happy that I have at least fused the two panels together in that area. So I've turned the welder right down and I'm going to be welding upside down, just trying to fill in the hole as best I can. and I can grind it smooth afterwards, hopefully. <sighs> I might have to do this in several stages. Oops. 
I'm either in the dark or blinding myself. <clears throat> oh, motherfucker. Right. Slight problem here. My super duper LED torch is so bright that it's triggering my reacting helmet, which means I actually can't see what I'm doing which isn't very helpful. <sighs> what I should really do is make it all look really easy and just show you the finished, super duper cleaned up worlds and make myself feel like a hero. It's not quite like that in the real world. Getting there. much done. What I need to check now is because I've had so much of an issue in that area is just double check I haven't got a crap load of hedgehogs on the back and I could feel one already. So these chaps they're a right pain because they can stick out through the seam sealer and then when the car goes back on the road that rusts down into the hole. So um, that one hasn't come through, it's good, that one did, that one didn't, that one didn't, that one, I think that's a hole for where there should be a um, bracket for a mud flap, which is why there's a bit left on the back side. But some of these I'll need to get in there with the finger sander or the back side of a grinding disc and just clean them up, but I won't do that until I've gone around the whole of the inner wheel notch. So more of the same. At least you know how to fix things when they go wrong. And they will. <clears throat> Just that one. remember to turn the world back up as well.
much better. See, I can do it. That's basically, doesn't even need rubbing down hardly. If only they would all work that nicely, eh? Again, I'm just turning the wire feed up a little bit because it's trying to burn back into the gun and leave big droplets like that. It's not good. Out of interest, I'm gonna again attack that one with the chisel. I'm gonna clean the front side off first, and then I'm gonna molest it just to see what happens. Because that's one where it was burning back into the gun, so it wouldn't have guaranteed penetration onto the backside. Beat the hell out of it. Right, even with a bit of hammer attack and the fact that that was burning back and um, into the gun, so it probably hadn't been penetrating fully on that. Because the hole was so big and I had the current quite high, it still held, which is reassuring. That's what we want to see. That one again, I've accidentally managed to well, uh, drill all the way through. What I'm going to try and do is can you see, you can see there's a shoulder. You've got the panel on the top here and then inboard of that you've got the panel behind and then you've got the big flapper. I don't want to disturb the flapper because I'm hoping that will stop any sort of hedgehog spikes going through. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to weld in from this side with a lower power but because I have got an end to weld into it'll penetrate nicely so I'm going to hold the gun over here and go in that way and then gradually fill it up and even though um, it's not ideal I'm pretty sure even with lower power because of the way that hole is now configured I'll get good penetration Ooh, uh. So, I'm just going to turn the world right down. Actually, on one min now, so lowest setting. So, that one big heavy tack, but I know that those panels are now going to be joined together. Now I can just clean it off and fill it up. Nearly there, two more to go. There's a bit of cleaning. Because this one's quite gappy, I'm going to do the same technique again. If I was to have my welder set high, 
if I didn't manage to pick up on that panel back there, I'd just burn a big hole because the heat can't get out of this panel into that one fast enough. So I've got the welder set quite low and I'm just gonna put a big heavy tack in there and then fill it up. So you see, that's what's now holding the two panels together. Anything after that is just to make it look pretty so when it's ground flat, you don't have a big divot. I think this one I'm going to upload as a whole video just by itself. I was going to carry on this afternoon, but I'm running out of time. And also, I think it might actually help people if I use this as a follow on video to the plug welding one um, because it kind of shows doing it right, doing it wrong, and the sorts of things you encounter. One more. I'm just gonna close that up while I can while it's still really warm. That is about all the welding done on this front wing. I just need to go around now, clean up, and then I'm gonna hammer this seam together, hammer and dolly it, clean up the back side, and then cut or sand through so we've left with what looks like one really nice edge from this side. Hopefully I haven't just blinded everybody like I've blinded myself. So I'm gonna put my breathing mask thing on now and then sand the hell out of it. Hammer Hydrate 80, rough pillar. I'm just gonna shove that on here. I don't think it needs it, but belts and braces and all of that sort of stuff. I can sand it back off later. It says on the bottle it can actually act as a top coat. I've never used it as such other than on, um, well, I've never used it as a top coat, but I've I've used it and then, whoops, and then not sanded it off before on the undersides of cars. 
it's a bit lumpy bumpy this side which is a bit annoying because I would have liked to have had just good metal and no filler but I think it probably will want just a tiny bit of filler in that bit but it's not the end of the world I'm happy with most of it good I'm going to wait for that to go off and then shake up some etch primer the hydrate 80 is pretty much gone off as I say, that'll all be epoxied anyway, so no big deal. What I've got here is U-Pole Acid Etch, Etch Primer. And just for my own satisfaction, I'm going to paint it all one colour, the external parts anyway. That'll stop it flash rusting, and I'll get an idea of exactly what I've ended up with. Etch primer, you don't put on really thick, it's just there to bite into the steel and provide a key for a top coat or filler or something. In fact, I think filler can go straight on steel. good as brushable CNC though, which is definitely my favourite. Again, don't worry about the bumper and the overspray on that. It's just a waste because it's not going to get sanded off anyway. But that is. Oh, I'll put it in. <clears throat> the end of the wing repairs <clears throat> yeah long story short it would have been a lot easier to just change the wing but I'm happy I didn't most of it's original there's absolutely no rust in there and when I think back to it originally I was gonna just I think the worst bit was about there wasn't it or somewhere externally only after I'd cut the wheel arch lip did I realize how bad the actual structure behind was but yeah i was originally going to just chop like little oh, bollocks no oh, never mind i was going to cut little sections out and sort of patch repair it all the way around but um that plan quickly changed to doing the arch lip and then for doing the inner um and ultimately doing it all so there's no rust in this side of the car at the front whatsoever there's still a bit up under there <coughs> but really in the grand scheme of things it's just surface so it can be rubbed down and treated but in other news when you get rid of this stuff that line for the sill all the way through to the front looks really good as you come down like this you can see how the wing flares out at the front like it should it's probably not quite as um, exaggerated, but it ain't far off. And then if you look at the a, a real wing, that's what we've ended up with anyway. So as you come down, that probably does kick out slightly more. Let's have a look. I don't know. It's about right. Only a spotter is going to know um, and basically for the car as a whole I think that's yeah it looks all right doesn't it it does kick out 
yeah, I'm happy with that. Right, so I'm going to go and do something else now because it's Sunday and I've got painting and decorating to do. See you later.